Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the structure of enzymes. You should then be able to explain why enzymes are specific. And finally you should be able to describe the effect of enzymes on the activation energy of a reaction. Now I should point out that if you're following the OCR spec then you need to be able to name intracellular and extracellular enzymes and I'll give you examples of those in this video. Okay so in this series of videos we're exploring the features of enzymes and the first idea you need to understand is that enzymes increase the rate of reactions. In other words, enzymes make reactions faster. And this means that enzymes are catalysts. And because we find enzymes in living organisms, we say that enzymes are biological catalysts. I'm showing you an example here. This is the enzyme catalase. Because we find catalase inside cells, catalase is an example of an intracellular enzyme. Catalase binds to the toxic molecule hydrogen peroxide and speeds up its breakdown to the harmless molecules water and oxygen. Amylase is another enzyme, but unlike catalase, amylase is not found inside cells. Amylase is produced in the pancreas and is released into the small intestine. The job of amylase is to catalyze the breakdown of starch molecules into the disaccharide maltose. Maltose is then broken down by other enzymes into glucose, which is absorbed into the bloodstream. Because we find amylase outside cells, we say that amylase is an extracellular enzyme. Trypsin is another example of an extracellular enzyme. Again, trypsin is produced by the pancreas and released into the digestive system. The job of trypsin is to catalyze the breakdown of protein molecules into shorter fragments called peptides. And again, other enzymes break down peptides into amino acids, which can be absorbed into the bloodstream. So as you can see in each of these examples, the enzyme attaches to and breaks down another molecule. The molecule that the enzyme attaches to is called the substrate molecule, and the molecules that are produced are called the products. Now the vast majority of enzymes are globular proteins, and we looked at globular proteins in a previous video. Remember that globular proteins have got hydrophilic amino acids on their surface, and any hydrophobic amino acids are buried within the centre of the protein, and this makes globular proteins soluble in water. I'm showing you the simplified structure of an enzyme molecule here. On the surface of an enzyme molecule we find a groove, which scientists call the active site. The job of the active site is to attach to the substrate molecule. Scientists now call this the enzyme-substrate complex. The key idea you need to understand is that the tertiary structure of the active site is complementary to the structure of the substrate. In other words, the substrate molecule fits perfectly into the active site. Because of this, each enzyme is specific for the substrate it binds to. As you can see, a molecule with a structure which is different to the substrate cannot successfully bind to the active site. Once the substrate binds, the amino acids on the surface of the active site can form temporary bonds with the substrate molecule. The enzyme then catalyzes the reaction to form the enzyme product complex. Now the products are released from the active site. So how do enzymes increase the rate for reaction? Well, the key thing you need to understand is that in any reaction, the molecules must have a certain amount of energy before they can react. Scientists call this the activation energy. Any molecules which don't have at least the activation energy cannot react. Enzymes provide a pathway for the reaction with a lower activation energy barrier. So in the presence of an enzyme, the activation energy barrier is lower than it would be without the enzyme. This means that more substrate molecules now have enough energy to cross the activation energy barrier and react. So in the presence of an enzyme, the reaction rate increases. In the next video, we look at two different hypotheses to explain enzyme action. These are called the lock and key hypothesis and the induced fit hypothesis. 